Hi there, my name is Dr. George Olstein and I welcome you to my ongoing video series which is entitled What's Achievable in Dentistry? In today's video I'm going to change the format a little bit because I've been in dentistry for over 30 years and there's a lot of common questions that get asked by parents in particular about the children's teeth and I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to go over some of these questions because it may be something that uh, you're interested in and haven't had answers to them as yet. Uh, some of the questions that uh, are answered also are related to adults, so adults are not left out in this situation. So let's have a look at some of the questions. Let's start with teething. Uh, teething uh, happens obviously as the teeth erupt and it starts uh, usually around the age of uh, six to seven months on average some children are earlier some uh, children are later uh, but often the children that are suffering from the teething often have drooling or dribbling around the sides of the mouth uh, they can often be quite grumpy and irritable and it's sometimes difficult to tell uh, you know what's causing it um, sometimes uh, children also have uh, an elevated temperature or what I found with some of my uh, children and grandchildren is they have rashes uh, or quite uh, red skin areas around the groin area and it happens usually because the urine has uh, changed in composition and it's quite irritating to the skin so you quite often find a rash uh, in that area as well. In terms of treatment um, you can either uh, use something like uh, some teething gels uh, they normally have some sort of um, uh, analgesia in it. Um, sometimes parents like to use uh, a teething ring, which is a, a little plastic device that you can get from, uh, I'm pretty sure, at pharmacies or at uh, supermarkets. And you put them in the freezer because they have uh, water in them, and the water freezes, and then the child sucks on the, uh, on the frozen uh, plastic, and that uh, coolness actually helps them with their teething pain. Um, if it got really bad, then some form of analgesia uh, drops for infants uh, could be helpful in that situation as, situation as well. The next question is, at what age uh, should we start brushing children's teeth and how do we go about doing it? I find the easiest way is to actually take your children into the bathroom, just like I'm doing here with my 12 month old uh, grandson, and let them watch you brushing your teeth and then their natural curiosity they'll want to do the same thing so just have a, a toothbrush handy and let them have uh, that to, so that they can suck on that um, you can buy special toothbrushes for children at the pharmacy which are age related and just have uh, normal water on it without anything to start off with as they get older and more into it you can actually add uh, special toothpaste which again are age related and check the packaging to make sure you're using the right toothpaste um, and then uh, let them uh, gradually introduce that into the mouth as well. As they get older, um, you know, kids don't develop a good manual dexterity till about the age of nine. So up until that stage, it's a good idea to play a game with them a little bit and maybe have them brush in the morning and then you supplement it at night time or vice versa, um, just to make sure that the teeth are being clean. And then as they get to that age of nine and they're able to have the manual dexterity then they can take over and brush it, their teeth by themselves. At what age am I commonly asked that children should attend a dentist? I usually instruct uh, uh, parents of uh, children uh, when they come to visit me to bring the kids along at any age uh, just so that they get used to the surroundings. When the parents are coming in to have their own work done and particularly during just examinations or scale and cleans where it's not much really going on just to let the kids get used to the surroundings um, and the noises etc and the people and then when it's their turn they're not as uh, frightened some kids will jump in the chair very quickly others take a little bit longer to break down the barrier so to speak sometimes what i'll do is play around uh, with children let them sit on mum or dad's lap and i'll play with them and just uh, ask them to open up without leaning the chair back just from the front so it's not uh, encroaching on their space so to speak um, and uh, eventually as they get older and get more used to it generally by the, about the age of uh, three or four I like children to have their own formal appointment. Another common question is is a dummy or thumb sucking better uh, one better than the other? 
and uh, it's a bit of uh, Peter to Rob Paul so to speak because there's pros and cons on both sides let's go through that very quickly um, if the child is a thumb sucker that's actually good for everyone including the parents because at night time if uh, the child needs some comfort then the, they can easily find their thumb and if that happens then uh, generally everyone gets a fairly good night's sleep the problem with thumb sucking is it becomes habit forming and can be very difficult to uh, throw away the habit so to speak and generally as dentists we like to see the thumb sucking habit uh, finished by the age of uh, six because that's when the permanent teeth are erupting and if it persists you can imagine with the thumb going in the mouth uh, the kids are sucking on that they can actually force the top teeth the front teeth up the top forward or they can uh, make the bottom teeth go back creating this overbite arrangement which can then lead to orthodontic uh, treatment requirements later on with dummies um, obviously when children are sleeping and they lose a dummy it's a bit hard for them to find the dummy to put back in the mouth so parents are often uh, uh, have interrupted sleep because they'll have to go in and put the dummy in um, and satisfy and comfort the child that way I suppose the better thing about uh, dummies is that it's a lot easier to lose the dummy as they get older so that uh, you know these orthodontic tr uh, troubles I was talking about with thumb sucking generally is uh, less of an issue it's basically a matter of choice there's no good or bad as I said how does diet affect uh, children's or adults teeth well uh, biggest factor is sugar because that's the biggest uh, problem with uh, tooth decay uh, obviously there are health issues with too much sugar but uh, with regards to teeth uh, sugar too much of it uh, it gets uh, the, the plaque in the teeth break down the sugar that's the bacteria that are in the plaque break down the sugar into acids and it's the acid then the content of that that uh, actually causes decay in the teeth um, and it's not how much sugar you're eating it's how frequently you're eating what I mean by that is to give you an example if I gave someone 10 lollies let's say and they ate it all at once that would do less damage in terms of uh, cavities or tooth decay uh, uh, compared to if they were taking a lolly one every few hours and eating it throughout the day I often advise parents if their children need a little bit of sugar that they have it at meal times because at meal times your pH goes down and it's already at, a, um, at an acidic level so having the sugar at that stage is not as critical as having it in between the meals it's always a good idea to have a drink of water afterwards just to um, dilute the effects of the acid uh, if it is present in the mouth brushing technique I'm sorry about this demo model it has been used over the years and this brush is a little bit worn for wear so it's not exactly what we recommend but it's something uh, I'm going to use for a demonstration purpose now with brushing it's really important to get around this area uh, where the gum meets the tooth because that's where plaque starts off and a lot of people miss out on that area and it's very critical so when you're brushing aim the toothbrush at a 45 degree angle give it a little bit of a, a massage there just to loosen up the plaque and then flick away away from the gum down away from the gum so again angling up at 45 degrees a little bit of a massage and then flicking away from the gum area where a lot of people also miss out is on the lower jaw uh, and it's due to the uh, nature of the curvature particularly on the inside there putting a brush in there just sort of doesn't fit really well so what I instruct people is to turn the toothbrush around vertical so we're looking like that and coming in on the inside and then you can brush each individual tooth a lot better a lot more efficiently than you would if it's around that way and this is a common site for building up uh, calculus uh, in other words plaque builds up there first and then because uh, the tongue is here there's a salivary gland and the saliva which rich in calcium uh, that calcium then hits the uh, plaque and calcifies it and it becomes rock-like like you get calcifications anywhere else in the body and that's where our hygienists spend a lot of time cleaning the calcium away or the, the tartar as we call it away uh, from that area of the mouth but if you turn the toothbrush around as I said you'll be more efficient at uh, brushing away that area I hope this video has been of uh, some value to you 
and i look forward to bringing you some more videos in the not too distant future thanks for watching